Yeah, I mean, so one of the one of the philosophies I had when I was writing copy, everybody's trying to sell something, and that's kind of the point, right? Like trying to con- to mobilize the person on the other end of the screen to read this copy and follow through. Mm-hmm. My my philosophy was to kind of get in and I believe that if if somebody can if somebody wants something, it it's old old copywriting training is like you got to get in you can't create I think Eugene Schwartz was saying that you can't create human emotion like you have to go in the flow with what already is there. Mm-hmm. You can't create human desire, you have to find out what they already want and go with it. So I kind of took that and developed a philosophy of if if somebody gets to the end of a piece of copy and they have no more objections, then the next step is for them to buy, right? Mm-hmm. Cause I'm assuming we're putting out products that people already want. The mm-hmm. byproduct of the product they already want. The result of the product they already want. I'm not trying to elicit more desire. I'm trying to mitigate the risk, the perceived risk that they have in this product, which actually turned out to be a pretty winning style of writing copy, uh, especially in internet marketing, because the biggest issue with internet marketing is believability. People think everything's a scam. But if you mm-hmm. deal with all of the objections that someone has, say they have 10 objections, you just systematically go through and eliminate each objection. They're going to buy. That's the next step. Well, we mm-hmm. took that philosophy into the world of product development. So if you look at the top four, four objections people have about high ticket consulting or investing into real estate or whatever it is, you can actually build products that are that their central theme is to deal with one objection at a time, mm-hmm. which is massive because mm-hmm. then somebody is trading money in exchange for what is real value. But really what you're doing is you're moving them along from left to right, dealing with an objection. So for us in TF, it was consulting client mm-hmm. kit um, was $10,000 and people had objections and they ranged from what if this doesn't work out, you know, to, I don't have enough money. All right, all everything in between is free, right. free yep. gamut. And so we created a product called Wealth Secrets, which mm-hmm. taught people how to think about money. And and it wasn't necessarily selling client kit; it was selling them on uh, this. It was selling them on how to think about the objection. And once they learned how to think past that objection, there was no more selling that was involved. And so now we have you know advertising products. We have Wealth Secrets. We have uh, the Common Sense Consulting book. We have Intelligent Advertising book. We have probably 18 to 20 different products. And they each teach people how to do what they promise to do. But more than that, they deal with the objection that is attached to that product. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. So, Yeah, yeah, so the the, the sort of front-end products are, if they buy them, they go through them. And that just sort of kills an objection to buying the bigger product down the line. I I think one of the ones that I've, I've seen a lot of ads for was like a, I think it was a productivity course. So let me tell you, let me tell you about productivity pack. Mm -hmm. Uh, How many times do you hear like, this sounds amazing, but you know, I don't have the time to go through anything else. All the time. So the productivity pack obviously is going to deal with that. Yeah. Um, If you don't, if, if you can organize your life in such a way that you can not only get more freedom, but you can get more time teaching people what's really important. And what do you think happens to somebody as they go through that product? Not only do they, their life obviously improves because it's a great product but no longer do we have to deal with the objection of, well, I don't have time to do this right now. Yeah. Well, yes, you do. You absolutely have time to do it because we just trained you how to do it in productivity pack and you gave us a hundred dollars for it. Yeah. That's Wait. a, I've never thought of it or, and I heard you say you call them advertising products, right? That's kind of, yeah. is that like the term you guys use? So yeah, these things are like little, oh, no, no. Uh, I mean, product, we have products that teach advertising. Oh, yeah. got it. Got it. Yeah. I was thinking, I was like, oh, these products are okay. They're going to be paired up for that too. But um, yeah, you're like training your customers to be the best customers for the big ticket thing or whatever is coming up yeah. after that. Yeah. Growing them up. 100%. Yeah. That's so smart. Yeah. With you. I mean, I'm just thinking of like the psychological implications. It's like, dude, they're listening to you. They're trusting you because you're literally coaching them from kind of like this foundational level to where they yep. really want to go, but they're just not ready for. So you're going to probably have way more loyalty, you know, people for like probably going to last way longer as a client just because we're like, Oh shit. Okay. Chris and, and Taylor have like rocked it from day one and like, yeah. you know, I'll work over 10 K no big. Yeah. Like, I trust. Them. We, we pivoted hard against when we came in, there was only one big competitor and the big defining message of that competitor was like click to client in 48 hours. Mm. It was like super fast, like wow. see an ad, be a high ticket client. And we kind of went the 
anti model of that we went with the opposite whereas like you know the the longer it takes someone to become a client the more trust they're going to have in us mm-hmm. and so our numbers are going to look better and so we're completely fine you know the 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 messaging actually began to sound like this we're completely content to invest into you before you invest into us because we understand that by becoming a, a member of client kit your that ten thousand dollars is way undervalued Mm -hmm. and what we're after is a long-term relationship and so that ten thousand dollars is a lost leader so we're going to go ahead and invest that money into you now by giving you ten thousand dollars worth of goods and services and information and it's not that the competition is doing anything bad they're just playing a different game than we are you know they're playing the amex game and we're playing like does this human have what it takes for us to have a long-term relationship. So all of a sudden the buying frame completely shifts around. People don't feel like they're, you know, it's not a predatorial type of approach where they're like, you know, imagine what happens when the complete dominating ethos of your program is like, bam, click to client in 48 hours. Hmm. Well, that's what just happened to you. And so they're like, Oh, but for us, we're like, we'll invest in you as long as it takes for you to get to the place where you feel like confident. This is the right thing. It's a much better approach in my opinion. It just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And it's, it's easy on you guys. You're not rushing mm-hmm. anything. You're not trying to cater to all these people's needs. You know what their needs are from day one. You've walked through, yeah. you probably understand all their, yeah, all the pain struggles and all that stuff in your research before even writing the copy and mapping this stuff out. So yeah, yeah man. Definitely. I'm, I'm curious what the, 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 um, the philosophy, the, the, the reasoning behind the, the, the memos, what would you call it now? It's now the insiders. Um, insiders access. Yeah. So I I think it's like, I don't know if the price has changed since we bought it, but I think it was like six bucks a month or something like that. Like, so you're probably pretty close to like breaking even on that. Like what, what's the, what's the sort of philosophy game plan with that? We're definitely losing money (laughs) on it. Um, because there's also shipping costs involved, Mm -hmm. but that, that started when, so one of our accounts got, uh, kicked off of Facebook Mm -hmm. and our, this was probably like, I don't know, 2016 or maybe early 2017. It was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, man, if, if we get kicked out of, off of Facebook completely, then what do we do? We have no way to, you know, to advertise. We have to go figure out YouTube or whatever. Well, let's just build a secondary list mm-hmm. so that we can, you know, advertise and sell to them. And I think the goal at the time was like, man, what if we had four or 500 people that were subscribed to this mailing list and then if Facebook kicks us off, it gives us like six months because we can kind of fish from this list mm-hmm. and it could be cool to build up notoriety in the market and, you know, just be cool. Everybody's doing it at the time. Direct mail was still out and it was starting to come back in, but we were at yeah. the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now it's like, you know, there's 40,000 people subscribed to this list and Dude, it's like, damn. it just became like this crazy thing. Uh, but at the time it was like, man, how do we get 400 people on this <laughs> just in case? You know, um, (laughs) insurance, it was very short sighted. It was a very, yeah, it was an insurance policy, but it was also very like small thinking, you Mm -hmm. know, like if we get kicked off of Facebook, how do we survive for six months? Mm -hmm. Um, whereas I think at at the time, like that's as far as we could see, whereas now it's like, we try to make sure that any moves that we make are significantly bigger than, than that, you know, Mm -hmm. but it, it did work out. It served a purpose. We're obviously still doing it. Uh, it's just a lot bigger though.